don't think we'll be able to carry here in the room. I don't know. It's something, though. It's definitely something. Does anyone else smell that? It's gasoline. I spilled it on myself on the bus. Why are you writing? I don't know! I feel like maybe I upset a witch or something. I feel like there's a parasite in my brain just eating away at my... My, my me. Can that happen? You're asking me like I'd know. Right. What was the question? Sweetie, I think you might have a fever. Yeah, six fevers. Or maybe our Soren is trapped in an alternate dimension. We're saddled with this guy. I can't tell if I'm just really sweaty in my legs or I peed my pants and forgot. I like him. Hey, speaking of interdimensional travel... What? What just happened? She just trailed off and you went silent for like five seconds. Okay, ground rules. No time travels and no scrooging or it's a wonderful life in our world. And no inner space shrinking where it seems like you're exploring some new universe but you're just in some other part of our dumb world. Space portals only. Or some kind of gate. Some kind of star... Stargate! Beetlejuice! You, obviously. I, I think I might be dying. <coughs> But anyway, Willard, you were saying? One second. I'm trying to figure out if you're just trying to lead me to a point so that you can tear down everything I say. I did. I will. First of all, technically Stargate isn't even an alternate dimension. A bunch of aliens kidnapped humans and are using them as their slaves, which I guess could make for a parallel timeline, so I'd let that slide. Even if you got there after the movie, when the oppressive aliens were killed and James Spader's like, hey, you guys, I'm gonna stick around and, and screw this slave for a while. You're still stuck in a place with a bunch of people with no laws or government. There'd be a huge planet-wide power vacuum. Exactly! A whole bunch of people with Stone Age technologies who are desperate for infrastructure, and you've got like a thousand years of evolution on them. You could be God. Of what? A barren desert planet? Besides, everyone would catch whatever the hell Soren has the second you breathe on them, because they haven't lived through Earth's plagues or epidemics. The show, SG-1, could have just as easily taken place a month after the movie and been about the guy accidentally killing his wife and her whole tribe with a cold. Okay, all right, I didn't get a chance to think that one through. That's why I changed my answer to Pleasantville. Oh, way worse. How? I mean, they're all so happy, and the basketball team makes every shot that they take, and, and there are pancakes for breakfast every day. Hey, I, I don't know a gentle way to put this, but I'm just going to come right out and say it. You are a woman. How dare you? That is our word. He's right, uh, though I'm not sure he's having the same conversation as us. The thing about Pleasantville is that you're basically plopping yourself right in the middle of 1958 America, before civil rights, before women were allowed to be doctors or speak up to their husbands or, or, or drive trains. Ah, yes, the main conquest of first wave feminism, train conducting. The whole point of Pleasantville is that this simpler time that everyone's trying to get back to is actually really f***ed up unless you're a white, middle-aged, heterosexual man. White? Middle-aged. Man, I got it! The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Dimension X. Boom! Mic drop. Which I would do for effect, but the floor looks sticky here. I don't want to lie on it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Dimension X. That place sucks! I mean, Schroeder's been every episode just trying to get the hell out of the there. The asteroid that they're on in Dimension X sucks. But, may I remind you, the same alternate dimension that brought us Krang and General Trag was also chock full of awesome stuff. Two. It's not just the volcano where the Technodrome is stuck, it's a whole galaxy. Remember the neutrinos? You get a hot rod around with them in their ships. There's a planet called Bellerophon that's entirely populated by a peaceful species that's never had a single war. Here's a planet called Palmadice that's basically just Hawaii wrapped around a planet. Wrong. It was like Hawaii until Krang had every single palm tree leveled and enslaved the only living turtle there as his henchman. Hmm. I wasn't on the toy packaging. Okay, well, there's still plenty of good ones. I just hop around from planet to planet when shit got hot. Bellerophon gets invaded by Krang because he knew they'd be a pushover species. How new, he obliterates and kills every living thing on it. How do you care about everything so hard? Every single planet in Dimension X is either being invaded, already obliterated, turned into a slave pit, or a toxic waste dump all by Krang. No matter where you go, that awful brain follows you because in Dimension X, I am absolute master. Ugh, embarrassing. You lost your one gift. What about The Simpsons? Does any of them? I could probably do most. No, no! The Simpsons, the alternate dimension. 
Treehouse of Horrors, Homer gets sucked into an alternate dimension that's 3D and all awesome, and then there are erotic cake stores everywhere, and it just it's, it seems nice. So, like our world then? Yes! Oh yeah, no, damn. Event Horizon dimension. At least you get to have an orgy before you die. Have you ever slowed it down and watched that ship video diary frame by frame? There's a lot of good stuff in there. Very innovative. That's just the thing. Almost every parallel universe is essentially hell. Beetlejuice, Pacific Rim, Coraline, Buffy, Super Mario Brothers movie, Alice in Wonderland. That's not even mentioning the ones that actually are portals to hell. Everything in those other dimensions are always trying to get here because they just, it's better here, apparently. Wait, you're telling me that there are portals to hell, but no portals to heaven? Oh, he's right. You have to die. You can't just jump through a mirror or a gate or take a pill. Maybe the point of all those alternate dimension movies is that this right here is heaven. At least compared to those alternate dimensions that are so shitty, this, what we're living, is what they want. This is as good as it gets. Your uh, ear is leaking. I need to lie down. There is one dimension we haven't dimensioned yet. Hold f***ing on, we gotta take him home. No, no take backs. Bizarro Soren can live with me. See? We've already got a secret handshake. It's Narnia. It's Narnia, you guys. But Narnia's in constant war, best buddy. I know, but good always triumphs over evil there all the time. But the kids are constantly putting their lives in danger, cool guy. Are you kidding? The kids get to become kings and queens and hang out with talking animals and live what feels like an entire lifetime in an hour of Earth time. Narnia isn't exactly heaven, true, but with all of the Christian analogs, it's essentially heaven light, and that's better than any of the shit we got going on here. Aslan even talks about the portal being like an open door in the sky, and when the kids come through that wardrobe, what's the first thing they see? Snow! That fawn! Something completely wrong and kind of sexist! No! No, you dummies, it's a light post! They're literally following a light into Narnia. It's the closest to heaven as we're gonna get. There, you can lead armies, you can ride a pegasus, you can breathe life into statues, you can sail the seas with Caspian because if a kid can do it, man, it would be magnificent, it would be the best, Dan. And that was it, the moment, and we all agreed with me, hey, winner, winner, chicken Daniel, you could be the best, <coughs> ow. Oh. think you'll, you'll, you'll die. Yeah, you'll probably just be paralyzed. What do you think, Soren? I think everything's fine, because I'm the guy who got you sick. Roll sound. Roll cameras. And action. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video you presumably watched, unless you just skipped to the end to watch the end plates like I do, because I really just super love the end plates. So if you're like me and you just watched the end plates, welcome to yet another amazing cracked YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel, End Plate. All right, it seems like we're coming to the end of the end plate, but I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cracked End Plates.